Hi, Winston. Hi, hi, Donny. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Okay, great. Well. I'm in Hong Kong now. In my oh, you're in Hong Kong. How's yeah. your mom doing? Uh, she's fine. She's fine. Actually, right. um, we just need to arrange to go through a minor surgery okay. uh, in, the, in the next month. Yeah, but otherwise, I think so. Yeah. So, um, when Hong Kong will be open up, opening up? Um, the 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 I think free bubble to return to mainland China will start um, maybe as early as early next month because the the cross border task force just met in Shenzhen yesterday. Okay. After the mainland expert delegation came and review how Hong Kong has been controlling the epidemic, um, uh, which concluded last Tuesday. So, um, yeah. So, so now when you come to Hong Kong from mainland China, um, a pawn, a pawn is sort of um, proper Jin Kang Ma, and then a, a COVID test within forty-eight hours. You, 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 you're not subjected to quarantine at all in Hong Kong. Okay. But then you need to go through six COVID tests in within fourteen day period. So I, I just this, did one at, at around noon time today. So. Uh, I, I did one on the third day of my arrival. Uh, one more today, which is the fifth day, and then another four more on the next whatever, next three really? weeks. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah. So your mm -hmm. th there's a it, there's an echo in the, in your mic. Oh, um, maybe you're moving around. Your um, when you're moving around uh, the court or something, they there's some some kind of a sounds, echoes. Now oh, it's okay. 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 Now it's okay. okay. Now it's okay. Okay. So you don't move around that don't move around the speaker. The, the speaker is in on, in your in your shirt. When you're moving around it, it creates the echo sound. Sorry, okay, okay. So I I'll, I'll stay still. I see thank you. Thank yeah. you, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's okay. Now it's great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um so when I was in Beijing, it was quite warm for a few days, and then it got cold after I left. So now it's <laughs> sort, of, sort of cold, or what's that? Now it's very, now it's beautiful. Oh since, really? Oh. Uh, yeah, since last um, since last Friday up to today, okay. still every day is sunny and an excellent quality of air. Okay. 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 Sunny and beautiful. Yes, it's okay, since okay. last. Uh, I think this last Tuesday, okay, it was okay. uh, a little oh. smoggy. Yeah, and after oh, okay. that, okay, yeah. So, just to let you know, um, uh, Shang Bing, <laughs> the dean of yeah. Chongqing School of Business. Yeah, he's he dropped out because he's sick. Yeah, he's sick. Yeah. yeah. Um. It looked like the Charles were really join us because I saw him at another panel uh, just 30 minutes ago. So okay. But now it's close to um, 4 a.m. So Charles may be staying up, we, we hope. Yeah. yeah. And then um, uh, Calippo will join us on time, I think. And then um, Ikram. He's, he's uh, online already, Ikram. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, you saw. You, you, can you see it on the on, on the left side, uh, right side, corner? Yeah, I saw him. with his meal. Um, I I only I only see. Let me see. You are, you are mute and you. Um, you. Are, let me see. Yeah, I I I cannot see. I cannot see Ikram. Because he, he only has a cell phone. He doesn't have a laptop. Oh, I saw I saw him in here. Okay, okay, okay. So so Let the way okay. Let me message him here. Okay. He can
Otherwise, we got a lot of time to talk. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> we can check just private chat. So you and I, we yeah. can have a talk. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. <laughs> yeah, I do a little research on 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 the state-owned enterprise, the role okay. play uh, in in a, in a one bell one role, and okay. it's very interesting. Yeah. Great, great, great. Charles is not. So Don, have you gone out to the countryside uh, using this good weather? Go to the yes. mountains. Uh, yeah, okay. yeah. Yes. It's um. It's great. Yeah. Great. Great. So next time when you re return to Beijing, let's do something together. I sure. For sure. Yeah. I introduce my wife to you. Hey, hey Winston. Hey. How are Hi, you? Hi, Charles. Charles. Good. Great. Hey. I just saw you half an hour Hello. ago. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Charles. Yeah. Oh, so good morning how are you to doing? you. Free good morning to you. Yeah. Who's the other person? I can't see. Don, uh, Don, Donnie, Donnie, we can only see ah. the. Um, we, we cannot see your face. You can only really? see the background. We can only see the how come? wallpaper. How come? Yeah, we're gonna see wallpaper. Now we can see your photograph. Oh, what happens? Maybe, may you turn your camera the other way. Maybe you turn your camera not facing you. Maybe you turn the camera the other side. Really? Yeah, we I, only see the wallpaper. I was I was able to do that uh, a while ago. How? What? What so, happened? So, Winston, where do you live in Beijing? Right? Yeah, in Beijing. Yeah, yeah. I live. I'm in Hong Kong now, uh, visiting my my mom. But I, I usually live in here. Yeah. Yeah. How come? How come? Is it my? So I, ha I haven't been to China for almost two years. Yeah, so I just I just arrived in Hong Kong earlier this week. Did and you have to go into quarantine? No, 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 no quarantine. But I've taken six COVID tests so far in the last week. Six COVID tests. Four in China, two in Hong Kong. Another four more to go in Hong Kong. So I live, I live for COVID tests. That's what I live for. <laughs> To okay. Go through COVID tests every yes. other day. Yeah. Yeah. So what 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 is your business, uh, Winston? Well, I've I've retired already, as 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 I mentioned. I was in I was in private equity, but I retired. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. So I just I just write a column now once a month and so on. Yeah. Yeah. You were in what? I just write a column once a month. Yeah, yeah. I'm just a col columnist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm semi-retired already. Yeah. Who is the who is the person we can't see? It's Donny. Oh, Donny is a consultant based in Beijing. Uh, he's from Guangdong originally. He studied overseas and worked in the various uh, MNCs. And, and now he's doing consulting for both MNCs and, and Chinese SOEs. And uh, Donny also teaches in the party cadre school for SOE senior managers based in Thailand. Uh, I was able to have a cup of tea with him in Beijing a few weeks ago before I left Beijing. Yeah. 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 I can. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let, let me tell you a little bit about uh, myself because we, I couldn't join the, uh, per, you know, the prep talk that you organized, but uh, I was born in Shanghai. I left when I was two years old. Can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Hi, Charles. Hi, how are you? So I was just telling him a little bit about myself because I couldn't join you guys uh, a few weeks ago. And I was born in Shanghai and I left China when I was two years old. I grew up partly in the United States, in New York. 
And then I was transferred to Brazil by an investment bank on Wall Street. And the second time I came to Brazil was transferred to the Bank of Boston. <clears throat> Most of my family live in, New York, in the United States. And uh, <clears throat> I, I, used, I normally travel about five times a year between United States, China, and Brazil. Uh, so uh, we left China when I was two because of the, uh, at the time, uh, you know, we were a capitalist family. My family, my grandfather is an uh, indust- textile industry in Wuxi, okay? You know, so um, we decided to leave China. But then several of my relatives became very important people within the Communist Party. And so it was easier for me to come back to China. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we all know Charles' family. Charles came from a very prominent family. Because I went to MIT, of course, I know about Tang Hall. Oh, yeah, is. yeah, we donated oh, Tang Hall yeah. to MIT, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and, of course, um, one of Charles' cousins was a, um, was a actually leading contender to be the chief executive of Hong Kong. Until my there nephew, was certain, my nephew, my nephew. nephew, okay, nephew. Until there's a certain incident of wine cellar that that derailed the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. And, and the secretary and his secretary. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My my uh, my first cousin's husband was a minister of the Central Committee of the Communist Party. Okay. Okay. And another uh, cousin's husband was the vice prime minister who restructured the Chinese economy and opened the Chinese economy to the world. Oh, then, what, was his, what was his name? This was Minister. Li Qing. Oh, Li Qing, yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. In fact, yeah. when he came to have dinner at my home in Brazil, he mm. brought his secretary together with him. Yeah, and yeah, his yeah. secretary is Li Hongzong, who is the right, party right. secretary of Tianjin now. Yeah. Right, 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 right. <laughs> So and my, my, my first cousin's husband that was the minister of the Central Committee is called Chen Li Ren. He used to be, before that, he was the editor in chief of the People's Daily. So um, another gentleman from uh, uh, Pakistan and uh, Nigeria is not joining? Um, we, we, we hope Kalipo will join, but we... So, we were supposed to start it now, right? Maybe, right? Yeah, so so maybe um, maybe we should start. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Only three of us to just check about Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, we, the Ikram may face a, a technical issue because he, he's traveling. He only has his cell phone with him. He doesn't have his um, laptop. So me, he may have difficulties joining in. So Calippo, we, he, he knows about this time. So, um, so why don't we start? Um, so welcome again, Charles and Donnie. And given the fact that now is is bright and early at 4 a.m. in the morning in Rio, so we would let um, uh, Charles share first. Now, um, Charles um, joined actually in one of the previous channel, and I actually was on the panel. I, ever, I I sort of listened to and agree with everything you say, Charles. But this this session is um, sort of different focus, not so generic about no. Uh, China in general, but um, it's really more about um, Belt and Road around the world. So, um, so perhaps what we'll do is maybe uh, Charles, you can give us a really Latin American perspective of um, Belt and Road and how you know, Belt and Road has uh, unfolded in Latin America in terms of both its achievements, its impact, and some of the difficulties of Belt and Road so far unfolding in Latin America? Well, the uh, China Railway International is drawing the plans for the bioceanic railway. As you know, today, for the exports of Brazil to China, you know, and Brazil is the largest exporter of soybeans and beef and, and, and protein, animal proteins to China. Today, the normal traffic shipping lanes between Brazil and China is either through the Panama Canal, mm-hmm. so if we leave the uh, 
since Brazil is in the Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. the ship leaving Brazil and arriving in China will take about, if we go through the Panama Canal, will take about 30 days or a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And if you go through the Cape of uh, South Africa, then it, go, it takes about 45 days. Mm -hmm. Now, if we build the bioceanic railway, then you leave from Peru or from Chile, and then it's 15 days to China. So uh, another company, CCCC, is trying to build a major deep ocean, a deep port in the northeast of Brazil. Okay, they were, they were going to spend about $1.7 billion. And this port would have to go, through, you know, it's closer to the Panama Canal because you're talking about the northern coast of Brazil. And uh, <clears throat> once, if that is completed, then you can shorten the distance to from 40 something days to 30 days through the Panama Canal. Now I am helping develop the uh, a port in the coast of Chile, on the Pacific coast of Chile. And once that is done, all the grains and all the products from South America, from Argentina, from the south of Brazil, and from Uruguay can all go through to the coast of Chile, and then it takes only 15 days to arrive in China. Uh, of course, Paraguay is also a major producer, but Paraguay, of course, does not have relations with China. <laughs> China cannot buy any meat or soybeans from Paraguay. Uh, I'm also the, the president of the Paraguay China Chamber of Commerce, and I had several talks with the president of Paraguay, telling him that he could transform Paraguay from a poor little country into the Switzerland of South America if he would only recognize China, because China would invest so much money into the infrastructure of Paraguay, and the infrastructure is the base of the development of any country. So uh, I've had several talks with him. I've had several talks with the vice president, with the president of the National Congress, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But when the COVID, when we, they were needing the COVID vaccines, he was sort of ready to speak to China, but uh, then uh, Blinken called him, and then he retreated from wanting to speak to China. <laughs> Right, 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 right. So this is right. the stage of the real the the, 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 the BRI in, in South America. Okay. Mm. Of course we mm. know what uh, happened in the Panama, the duplication and the enlargement of the Panama Canal. And there was a project, a Chinese project to build a canal through Nicaragua, but that never went through. So mm. So I think right. that uh, uh, the, the, the BRI has not been so uh, intense to now in the South America. But if the bioceanic railway is built, then of course it will be very, very helpful to Brazil and to China. Okay, The Chinese grain buyers will save a lot of money on the shipping costs and the time, the shipping time. Right. Now, from what we read before, the economy of Venezuela imploded. Actually, China actually invests quite a bit of infrastructure and, and other things in Venezuela. But now all has all of those has come to the bottom. Right? It's gone down the drain or how, how is it happening? Yeah. It is amazing what happened in Venezuela because you have the richest country in South America transformed in a few years into one of the poorest countries of South America. So, you know, it's basically the, ideolo the ideological interference 
in the economic development, which also for 30 years held China back, okay? Uh, until Deng Xiaoping decided, you know, let's change our economic politics so that we can become prosperous. Right? Mm. So I think that uh, Venezuela is the richest, was the richest country in Latin America, and now it's the poorest. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I'm really intrigued by this by, by, by oceanic rail. So essentially, is can you say it's like a bypass of the Panama Canal? So the, the ship would dock in one side of South America, go by rail to the other side, or how does it work? Yeah, for example, there are two projects, okay? okay. One is leaving Rio de Janeiro, where I live, and going across and exiting in Peru. Mm. So the railway will go from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. And then, of course, from the Pacific Ocean to China by ship, it's only about 15 days. Mm -hmm. And there's another project, which is basically from Argentina, going through the a valley in the Andes Mountain, where today already many, a lot of trucks go through with carry, you know, carrying 40, 50 tons of grain in each truck. Mm -hmm. And then they go to the coast of Chile. Mm. And the port in the coast of Chile will take an, uh, about 15 days to reach China. So mm. that will facilitate the trade between South America and China and will make the Brazilian and Argentinian products much cheaper for the Chinese. And, and what's the schedule for these railways? Are they... Are they still on the drawing board or under construction? Or what's the, what's the well, process? China, when, when I had a meeting, uh, uh, you know, before the pandemic with the chairman of the uh, China Railway International, they were the ones who were doing the plans. But the, it's a very complicated subject because, you know, you have the colleges. Like when I defended the Bioceanic Railway, I had a lot of criticism from the people who believe that, uh, you know, you can't have a railway go across the jungle. So, so the the key challenges are environmental. Is that the key challenge, Charles? For these no, it's not. To take up? It's a bu bureaucracy, environmental. It, it's it's a whole bunch of politics, as you know the. Right. As a president of Brazil, you know, uh, loves Donald Trump. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And uh, he was not very friendly to China, although China, Brazil's economy depends on China. You know, in the three last three years of trade between Brazil and China, Brazil has, the surplus of Brazil has gone to almost 110 billion dollars in three years okay mm. and of course when the, you know Trump was waging the trade war with China uh, Brazilians Brazil exported 90 percent of its soybean crop to China 90 percent 90 percent and Brazil bought American soybean and Paraguayan soybean for its own consumption because it had a discount of 25% <laughs> imposed by China on American grain. So, mm. and so, and now China has stopped buying uh, beef from Brazil for about two months already. So the Brazilian mm. beef prices have come down. Mm. And they keep mm. on asking me when Brazil, when China will start buying, importing beef again. Mm. Mm. Now, now we all know about the trade friction between Australia and China because of the geopolitical situation between the two, two countries. And I think China shifted some of the imports from Australia to US and to New Zealand, maybe to Canada. 
and some to Latin America also. Do you see that that no, that Latin America has benefited somewhat from the the, the Sino-Australian trade Not, friction? No, I I don't think Australia is exporting much to Brazil. Okay. okay? Because you know Brazil is also a big agricultural country, and, right. ex and, the, and the largest ag export of agricultural projects. Mm. In fact, we're also trying to study how how we can export coal to China, you know, because there's still a few years of coal life left before everything goes green. Right. Correct. Yeah. I'm also the chairman of the. I'm also the president of the Brazilian Association. Of waste to energy and right. hydrogen, right? Okay. So uh, we we I'm I'm very concerned about the you know the climate change and what we would like to do is try to produce renewable uh, renewable clean energy. Now, do you have iron ores in Brazil or other Latin American countries? Iron yeah, ores. Brazil. You know, Brazil has all kinds of minerals. All kinds right. of minerals. In right, fact, right. I'm going to be I'm going to be involved with one of the largest mines in Brazil in rare earth, cobalt, and mm. phosphate, and uh, potassium. Mm, 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 mm. Brazil has Ooh. so much minerals. You can just walk all over it. I mean, I had right. a, I had a big iron ore reserve. Where it's all over the ground, you can and you can pick anywhere you want mm. a piece of iron ore, and it mm. has to be like 70, 69, 70, 75 percent. So now, as you know, the 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 one product that from from Australia which is indispensable um, for China is iron ore. And, and and for a long time, China has been trying to diversify its iron ore from Australia, including from countries such as you know, Africa and so on, in South Africa. So why aren't you seeing more active investment by the Chinese in in exploring, developing, extracting iron ores from Brazil? Well, as you know, Brazil is a very large exporter of iron ore and manganese to China. Mm. Okay. Mm. And I just recently have a Chinese company, a state-owned company, wanted to buy iron ore, and they're willing to send machines and engineers to help extract the iron ore. Mm. Okay, mm. to ship to China. Mm, the see, big I problem see. with iron ore is that Vali, which is the big mining company that has offices in China, controls the logistics. Hmm. Okay, and mm. so it's difficult for other people to export iron ore. There's a lot of iron ore in Brazil. Everybody has iron ore. Everybody has soybeans. The problem with iron ore is that you have to use the Cape size ships, and 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 Valley basically controls the logistics of the country. I see. I see. So logistics so, is the bottleneck. Infrastructure yeah. is the bottleneck. So that's why you know when I was having the meeting with the chairman of China Railway International, you know, we could have, it was, you know, we could build a bi-oceanic railway connecting the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean. It would be very, very helpful, very good for I Brazil. See. Right, 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 right. So, well, it's, it's excellent. And, and Charles, we, we're so grateful that you stay up so late to share with the audience until 4 a.m. I hope you, if you haven't dozed off, yes, please stay on. Wow, now we go to Donnie. Um, Donnie has a, a, a sort of uh, a, a long and illustrative career with different MNCs in China, and uh, he's been doing uh, a lot of consult consultancy work both for MNCs in China as well as Chinese enterprises, including state owned companies. We call them the SOEs, uh, which are you now going global. So maybe you no, know, we we have heard from you no know, Charles about his perspective how the you know, Chinese are trying to um, uh, sort of expand its BLT in different parts of the world, including Latin America. So maybe we we can have a perspective 
not only from the outside looking in, but from inside looking out, how, you know, done from the perspective, how are, you know, Chinese companies, particularly SOEs, really exploiting BOT opportunities all around the world? To you, Don. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Winston. So, uh, so now I face experience with consulting, you know, doing consulting with the uh, Chinese company, especially now more and more helping SOEs going global. So the one bell on one roll, the statistics is state-owned enterprises are the key uh, player in the one bell one roll initiatives. Uh, the latest statistics is uh, about 70% of the uh, be one bell one roll contract are delivered by SOEs. So SOE for the audience, some may not um, kind of uh, familiar with the term is, is China, the state-owned enterprises, which is also creating a lot of frictions for the Western company like America and, uh, and, and, and Europe. They think there is not fair competition because the SOE is owned by government. So China, I give a little background for SOEs. So, so state-owned enterprises, China currently there's a, oh, oh, there are 96 enterprises going from 196 to 96 in the last 10 years. So actually Chinese companies are shrinking, you know, consolidating the state owned enterprises. So many academia in West call the SOE, they do not, they call, keep them, they call the social enterprises. I, I really agree with that is that because the Chinese SOE he is not primarily for uh, for profits. They will go, you know. They will sacrifice social value for profits. So this is a lot. Of, sometimes in the Western academia, saying the Chinese economic success, you know, is is because part of because of the SOE, the role of SOE. So SOE um, also playing a very important role for China. Now is China coming from, uh, originated from a, 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 a attraction of a foreign, invested, you know, foreign direct, uh, direct investment. China actually this year has become the largest uh, foreign direct investment uh, going out. You know, this is, this is a very, 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 very different role the Chinese play. And that a lot of Actually, investment are done by SOEs. So at the SOE, I give you so the example of that when Charles talk about railroad, you know, railways. I will give you an example how China doing excellent job in they call it China Europe, China Europe Railway Express. So this is initiated in 2011, March 2011. It's the first China train go from Chongqing to Duisburg in Germany. It takes about 15 days. It changes several uh, trains in, along the way because the railway standard along the way, they're not the same because the, the rail on different countries, the rail is different. So they actually, they, they, the train started from from Chongqing going to go through Russia, they have to change the train and then they ship the contain, you know, the train containers, another train go through. But just imagine 2011, that is part of a one bell, one row. Later on, it's a very core part of the one bell, one row. It's, a, it's a, the train, go, the goods, ship the goods from China to the Europe. Yes, the last year is 10 years from, uh, for that uh, operations. So in 2000, I'll give you a, a, a figures, 2011, in first year, totally only seven, 17 ships, trips. So it means only go one way from, from China, Chongqing, to Germany. And then they empty the coming back. There's no cargo ready for ship to back. So just initiate and then increase tremendously along the way. In 2000, in last years, over 
twelve hundred trips. Just imagine ten years from seven to seventeen trips. Now is twelve hundred twelve thousand trips. The goods and connecting right now, connecting sixty cities in China to twenty two countries in a hundred sixty countries in Europe. So that means. Charles and the, and the Winston, you know that Chinese Yi Wu is the capital of a small product, right? Now they have a trip. I have a, I have a train go directly from Yi Wu to Madrid, Madrid, Spain, and every day they ship. It only takes fifteen days. And it's shipped at least one third cheaper by ship, and is cost wise much much more cheap. So this Absolutely. this. This is creating a phenomenon, especially now in that by sea is have a problem in supply chain right now. And I looked at figures in in 2011, in this year, only in up to October, from January to October, the sh- the trips already bypassed total of last year. So means they already seeing about 30 percent increase already. Today, so not alone have a have a few uh, two, four months. So total the ship. So now what happens is、uh, it crave not only Chinese ship that the, the cargoes can ship from there.、So、the products made by Samsung in Vietnam, some some products from French companies in Laos. They can't go from. They can now just shift because Chinese build and then they shift from this route go to the Europe. So it actually change the dynamic of the logistics or supply chain in you know for for China. This is already that I think is the and the key player is the railway China National Railway、um, Company. They change do a lot of modifications, do a lot of new restructure. Re- I would call the refitting of the train to go just for the、um, China Europe railways. So this is a, a new phenomenon. Maybe not many people really pay attention to it, but now is much much.、Uh, it, especially in this years, it create it help China tremendously to connect with the rest of the world. Because when、uh, the trip the trip in the in the In a canal, stop for almost、uh, a month, you know, and then they they can't do anything, can, you know. But the China that that through the through the、uh, China Europe Railway Express, they can can solve a lot of problems through that. So this will give you an example how Chinese state-owned enterprises play the role into、uh, drive that that、uh, infrastructure building, and it's a good example of a Chinese uh, uh, state-owned enterprise. I give you another example is.、Um, Just newly、uh, initiate, but in a one bell one row or bell row initiative, I think the Chinese government、uh, have a, a a slogan called、uh, "Build together,、uh, you know, talk, you know, like a, work together, build together, and share together, you know." And then they initiate, initiate, and work with all the party that willing to do、uh, the, the 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 corporations. I give you an example of a, of. A, Maybe Charles, you have to heard about that. Is the China in 2015? China, the city of Chongqing, partnered with Singapore government to build the called a、uh, new China Singapore Connectivity Initiative. Actually, they use Chongqing as a center in all the provinces in South China, South Southwest China, as a platform to connect South. Asian, you know, with the South uh, South uh, uh, Asian countries through railway, through、uh, rivers, and through roads, and then they build、uh, all together. So now, for example, the cargo Singapore cargo or the cargo from Chongqing, if they used to be by sea, they have to go to the Changjiang, go to all that, and then by sea. Even go to Singapore, it take quite a while. And now they shorten,、uh, much short, shorten the day because they threw、uh, rate the train, they threw、uh, 
uh, the, the, the trucks even. So now it's actually the building that initiative. Not only do that, and then they build, uh, creating, uh, inviting global partners and the parties coming to even finance the project. So a lot of a company from around the world interesting to partner financing a lot of project like that. So this is creating and Chinese all the key player, players also stay on uh, companies that participating, partnering and work together with the Singapore government. They call it Singapore China Singapore third project. Maybe you uh, you know that the first project is in Suzhou Industrial Park. It's extremely successful. Create it becomes pseudo now. It's become, uh, I think, just in industrial wise, is bypass Shanghai. Become uh, in it is the biggest uh, in GDP per capita because of that uh, Singapore uh, projects. Uh, the partnership with Singapore. Second one is with Tianjin. Create eco cities. Singapore, China eco city in Tianjin. It create another uh, very successful project. This is the third project for Singapore government. To partner with Chinese government in Chongqing. So now that project is connecting. I started in 2014. Now I see that and I read the data that in South China, the Southwest China province from Guizhou, Guangxi, Yunnan, Sichuan, even Tibet, that all the products goods able to ship to 130 countries through that Singapore and China initiative. Through, you know, con- connecting. Uh, with that uh, new projects, so I just give an example of China how the state-owned enterprises that able to 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 do a lot of goods because they is part of the Chinese government and is not driving the key the f- key features. They is not only driving economic as a sustainable, but they look at social value as number one. So they're creating the infrastructure building. There's not only benefits for um, for the China and also benefits for from the any country they uh, have a project. So I read another data that all the state-owned enterprises they have a project in one bill one row outside of China. They literally on average involve eighty percent of their employees come from local countries. Eighty-five percent actually. Eighty-five percent of employee. Involved in one bill one road projects by state-owned enterprise, the eighty percent or eighty-five percent of them are from local. So that give the way that how they play a key role, not only in China maintain the China uh, 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 sustainable in a way. Uh, it is not like uh, other countries that they run by private sectors. They try for profits as a primary uh, goal. But this China, this uh, Chinese social enterprise, we call it state-owned enterprise, actually maintain the social stability as a number, as, as a top priorities. So this is create a very important uh, elements for Western uh, people outside China to look at China economy. So the key state-owned enterprise is play a very important role uh, in China the economic. They they even sacrifice that. Effectiveness or efficiency and the profits for the social values. Okay, Winston, I would just I, I would just stop from here because I give our two examples how they play a very important. Maybe I can invite more questions, then we can go to more detail. Because China now is a stay on the price. They 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 come go from building ele- electronic factory, ele- ele- electronical vehicle factories in South Africa to Russia. To uh to Indonesia, to you know and building shoe factories in uh, in Nigeria, you know all all it's it's its own kind of project. It's now I think based on the statistics, the building state-owned enterprises building thirty thousand four hundred projects globally up to date. Great, yeah, thanks, Donnie. Go ahead, Charles. Please go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the BRI is was a fantastic initiative, and is so successful that now the U.S. and Europe want to c- copy it. <laughs> yeah, they, they yes. So uh, you know, and and that shows how successful it is. Yeah, okay? and not only uh, that it helps move the goods from China, 
but it helps develop the countries where yes. it's going through. Yes. You know, and that is one aspect that I con I think it's so important, okay? That you have these landlocked countries that had no access to the world. Yes. And today they do have access to the world. And when you build the infrastructure of a country, that is the basis of the economic development of the country. You know, when I, in my, when I had a, when I was a, last time I was a speaker at Oxford University, and Mr. Yi Gang was also another speaker at the same uh, conference, I said, you know, China transformed a lost continent, a forgotten continent of Africa, where its colonial masters stripped away a lot of its wealth into a very successful continent. The fastest rates of economic growth are in countries, African countries, where China invested massively to build their infrastructure. Okay, so that is also why China has been responsible for lifting not only 600 million Chinese people from poverty, but lifting hundreds of millions of Africans, South Americans, Latin Americans, Southeast Asians from poverty. Yes, the ACE, especially the initiative with the, with the building with the Chinese neighbors, like Asian countries. Now the Asian country, Asian become uh, China's biggest trading partners from this year. Right. Replaced from US. And so this is a very interesting phenomenon that uh, 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 One Bill, One Row, that originally from uh, hi historically from Zheng uh, He, Xia Xiang, the uh, copy the name that the Emerald Zheng uh, He uh, in, in 14th centuries, you know, take, took the ship all the way, go to the South Africa. So, and then, uh, so that just give an example also how China wanted to uh, re uh, rejuvenize those concepts, had to build the friendships and the properties, uh, <clears throat> prosperities with the, all the country that touched with the, uh, with, with the initiative. How, how many... Uh... How many minutes do we have left? Maybe we should open to whoever wants to make a question, to ask a question. Great, great, Charles. We only have five minutes left, so I'll open the floor, and uh, whoever can ask a question, can even type it in, we can see, or just grab the mic and address the questions to us, you know, so that the Charles and, uh, and Donnie could, uh, could respond. Please, yeah. While we're waiting for the questions, yeah, please you now ask any time. Grab the mic while we're waiting for the questions. If I can just give a little bit of context to what Donnie just shared, um, there are a very limited number of central SOEs left now. Donnie said no less than 100. Now, going back to the 70s, almost all enterprises in China are state owned SOEs. There were millions of them, yeah. right? Yes. Now, so in the 80s and 90s, most of them either has gone out of business, went bankrupt, or were privatized. Yes. So most SOE disappeared in the last century. So today, there are still the central SOEs, and there's some at provincial level, local levels, the less important. The reason why we see SOEs in the Bells and Roads are most sectors are now uh, privately owned in, 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 in the private sector's hands. But in infrastructure that is both in transportation, large-scale engineering, resources, both minerals and oil and gas, mm -hmm. those sectors are state-owned. So that's why we see more SOEs in Belt and Roads, just because of the nature of those projects. Yes. Uh, but once they get started, of course, all kind of private enterprises uh, can, can go up in, into these countries. Charles. I, I think that uh, SOEs played a very important role in the development of China and in China's economy. In fact, uh, the largest conglomerate, SOE conglomerate in China, was built by my uncle. 
Hmm. Okay, Ag Agra, you have some Agra. something. Yeah, please. Yeah, please. Yeah, three. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, participating from the Ball City in the Philippines. Okay. Right, right. Right. Welcome. And, uh, hello again. And uh, ni hao. At, at, at the risk of making this session uh, like a praising session for China, uh, uh, the Philippines, whatever the politics, you know, the South China Sea, the West Philippine Sea, the way most people here see the Belt and Road Initiative, I fully agree that whatever happened in past, in history, or in the case of Africa, I've been watching the YouTube videos of this uh, railway that's built uh, across throughout Asia. The Philippines has been looking forward to being part of that Belt and Road Initiative, at the very least, the Maritime Silk Road. And Mindanao, which has a long history of affinity with China, as we always say, we are more uh, Chinese and Europeans. No offense to America, but there are a lot of pro-America sentiments in the Philippines. And, but these are just geopolitics as we in the communities see it. And um, I just want to... It's more of asking a question, maybe, but aside from, again, praising China, thanking China for that initiative, although the Philippines hasn't enjoyed to the maximum yet because of the realities of politics. Our election is coming soon, and whatever challenges our past President Duterte had, uh, we hope the result of the next election will be a continuation to his pivot, uh, leaning towards China, to correct the history anyway. The question would be, uh, is there an expiry for the Belt and Road Initiative? Uh, like in the next five years or six years, when the climate uh, is already ripe, then we can pursue whatever aspirations of Mindanao, for example, at least on the Maritime Silk Initiative or the high-speed railway that the former chairman of the Mindanao Development Authority really wanted to implement. But unfortunately, again, as, as we had seen, uh, uh, it's still something to be to see light of the day. So anyway, it's a long comment, but so the Belt and Road Initiative continues for the next at least six years. That's my question. Thank you. It certainly will continue. I think we will continue. Yeah, can definitely it will continue. Thank you, thank you, and uh, that's all. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, yeah. actually, China uh, the uh, state grip is uh, also partner with the Philippine state grip providing a lot of uh, uh, powers for the Philippines. So they helping a lot with the, actually the, the why that so efficient, Philippines now have power. It's a China state grip, uh, invest and, 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 and help uh, with the Philippine uh, uh, state grip to, uh, to, to provide all the facilities uh, to, to provide the powers, electricity to the Philippines. Oh, yes, uh, I should uh, th thank you for mentioning that. Uh, I, I should mention it myself. Uh, there's a lot in Manila, uh, Luzon, yeah. uh, but there's still a lot to be done. I mean, it, yes. at least for Mindanao's side. Uh, yes. Mindanao is really looking forward to it. Yes, I understand. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, uh, again, our time is, is up, but uh, uh, thank you for all the contributions. Uh, if I can just make a, 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 straight, a brief response to Edgar. Um, now, in, in my previous life as investors, you know, in G Capital and so on, I've looked at different projects in uh, the Philippines. We invest in one project. And of course, you know, I, I, I don't know the details of you know, politics with the Philippines, but um, it's uh, easier for China to invest uh, in some of the more developed parts of the Philippines, like, like the zone. And but now it's, it's more a um an area that is not at, at least when i when I look at it now no more than a decade ago is, is more challenging given the, the overall you no know, political context so um I, i'm sure china would like to involve in different all parts of philippines but they are just like any investors 
uh, when they look at the Philippines, they will say, okay, uh, is it easier for me to invest in the zone? What is the, the different kind of risk profile in Medanel and so on? So it's just that they need to look at risk reward, like any investors, whether they are you know, Singaporean, Americans, European or, or, yeah, or, or Chinese, they'll look at you know, just the risk reward profile of different parts. Of, of Philippines with great potential. So with that, thank you for your questions again, Edgar. Thank you, Charles Singh, so late, part of this panel, we appreciate it. And thank you, Donnie, for joining us from Beijing. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. Nice, thank you. nice be meeting you guys. Nice to you. Edgar, nice to meet you from Philippines. Yeah. Thank, yeah, yeah. well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will continue the talk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.